Okay, so in this video, we're going to have a, another look at timber frames. So we're going to do some internal timber frames this time. And we're also going to have a look at um, moving around mullions and so forth as well. So let's first of all go into our families in our project browser. Okay, down here, and we'll scroll down to curtain panels and curtain mullions. So the curtain panels, first of all. I'm going to duplicate by right clicking down there and call that one um, insulation. Okay, and then in the mullions, I'm going to find the rectangular mullions, duplicate the 150 million, change it to 100 millimeters, and also call it timber. Now, once I've done this um, on both of them, I need to double click and edit some of the properties. So the thickness change to 100. The material is going to be no longer aluminium. So let's go for timber. And I'm going to just use the timber joist rafter layer. OK, but I don't like having these colors like this. So I am going to change the color. Now, this being timber, I'll go for a brown style color. There we go. Um, that should be fine. Or, or it could be a lighter color than that, maybe. There we go. I'll just pick that one for now. And just change this. Now, you could play around with the actual colors themselves to pick something a bit more palatable for you, um, but that will do for here. And I'll also just pick the same colour in the appearance by there for now as well. Say OK. And now we've got the dimensions width on each side. So this is either side of the centre line. So 25 on both is good because that gives us 50 millimetres overall. Say OK. And then I'm going to go back to my insulation one and get rid of that offset. I don't want an offset on it. I want it to sit flush with the timbers. The thickness is 100, so it's the same as my stud work. Material on this one, um, click by there, and we are going to type in insulation. And I'm going to use the fiberglass bats. Um, again, I don't like having just this solid grey colour, so I'm going to use that colour there. And go to graphics and just repeat those same colours throughout. There we go. No surface patterns anyway, but there we go. So we got a bit of colour to it. All right, and say OK. So that's first elements done. OK, now I can just minimize those families by there. And now we're on level zero here. Um, I'm going to just create or change my levels a little bit. I'm going to change that to 2600. And let's just change my scale as I work on this. And then I'll just create a new level up there, maybe for a later. There we go. OK, so what I want to do here is click on the wall command, use the type selector scroll down and pick curtain wall storefront, edit the type, duplicate it, change this to timber frame. OK. And now adjust our vertical grid spacings. So that's going to be uh, 600 for this one. And I'm going to make these 1,200. OK, now we've got to pick our millions. So I've got 50 by 100 timbers. 
there it is, and select that for all of the mullions. Okay, now also we've got this curtain panel and we're going to click that and we're going to scroll down to find the insulation one I created there. Now we are going to come back to that join condition at a later date. So I'm just going to click OK here. And now I want to draw the actual wall. So I'm going to put the top constraint on this one at level one and just leave it like that. I'm just going to draw two walls like so. Oops, let's try and actually make them straight. That's better. All right, now let's have a look at that in 3D. There we go. So we've now got our timbers like that. So the next thing we are going to do is adjust the corner. Now, as we look, or actually before we even do that, we'll notice that the mullions are intersecting the vertical studs here. All right, so noggins, we quite often call these. So noggins, across the top though, this should be one continuous timber plate across the top and these vertical studs should not intersect it. So this is where we're actually going to highlight this now and go back and look at the join condition. Now there are a few options here. The vertical continuous and horizontal continuous, neither of those are what we want. But if we go for the border and vertical, so that means the borders will be continuous and verticals will be continuous then inside the borders. So that's what we'll pick and click OK. And as you can see now, we've got a continuous plate across the top and bottom with the studs being continuous inside that, which is desirable. Next is the corners. You may notice that this corner does not look great. Um, don't tend to build them like that and those two timbers are actually overlapping each other on that internal corner. So if we just look at this by here we can see we get that crisscrossy effect. So what we can do is click on one of them, use that to drag one of the ends and then click on the other one and use that to drag it. Oops. OK, it is easier if you do it the other way around, so I'll just undo and drag to the outer side first. That makes it a little bit easier. And then this one you can drag back to the inside. So now you've got a clear stud there and a clear stud there. And if we look at that in 3D, it gives you a much nicer looking corner on your drawing and on the inside. There we go. That looks OK as well. Um, all right. So next we are going to put some plaster walls or plasterboard on this. So I'm just going to jump back here and use the wall command. Find a wall that's relatively suitable. So this one here is a great one. So my stud work is 100 mil. So 100 mil block work is going to be very easy for me to replace and duplicate again. And I'm just going to change that there in the name to 100 stud and get rid of the number two, say OK, then edit the structure and remove the concrete masonry units and I'm just going to replace it with A. Okay. And say, okay. But keep the thickness as 100 and we've got the plaster then either side, which is great. Say, okay. So what we can do here is use the wall center line 
All right, you could adjust it how you see fit, but center line to there, to there. We get a warning. We can get rid of that warning. We don't need to worry about it. And then continue this down to the bottom there. OK. What that's done, as you zoom in over here, you can see you've got the plasterboard wrapping around the corners nicely. And in our 3D view, we can also see that wall like so. This enables us then to just use standard doors in our um, curtain walls, which is also quite handy. So let's just drop one of these doors in. All right. Now, as we look at that in 3D, we can see it does have a bit of an issue because we've got the um, stud work and the insulation still showing. So let's just jump to another elevation by here. And what I'm going to do for this is I want to actually make sure I select the curtain wall. So just be careful with your cursor to make sure you get the right selection. OK, then just jump across and we can still it's still highlighted. Edit the profile. And just quickly draw around the opening. Like so. Now we have to make sure it's one continuous pink line. So we're just going to adjust that and we'll unjoin those elements and then draw in a new line just to finish that off across the bottom. Tick. OK, so now when we look at it, we can actually see our doorway by there and we haven't got the stud work getting in the way. Looks much better. Now let's actually have a look at the stud work. So let's click on our wall. All right, we're going to jump back to this elevation and we're going to hide that wall. There we go, we're using the hide element command. So what we've got now is um, some issues with regards our noggins not being quite right. So if you really wanted to, you could adjust these because perhaps by here we'd want this one to go right the way across. Therefore, you can click on it. You can unpin it by clicking that and press the delete command. So click, unpin, delete. Same by here. And just get rid of those ones like that. Now we want to add a new one in along here. OK, so let's go to Curtain Grid. And we can use the um, all except picked if we wanted. So we could put that down here. Now it can be a little bit tricky to get it in the right place. so. I'll just click by there for a moment and then you've got to go around and click on all the segments that you don't actually want it to be on. Doesn't seem to. There we go. So, yeah, um, as we can see, we've got a few left there, which I didn't actually. I could just unpin all of those and then press delete if you've got them there. OK. Um, add remove segments and there we go we could just now get rid of those four segments like that and they don't even appear as lines so that's nice and neat but what I can see here is that this is not really quite in the right place so I can see that that is five millimeters out of position so I am going to just get rid of these ones and just do that again Now, the way to check this here, to make sure you get it where you want it. All right, 260. So I'm going to add five millimeters to that to lower it by five mil. So I'll want it to be 265. There we go. Drop it back down. And then I will add millions to the grid line segments there and there. Okay. Let's have a little look. 
Now, if we click on these, um, we can see here we've got these little like plus signs. If we click that, that takes it through on that side there. Now, we could do it on that side, but we don't actually want it on that side because we want the stud to be continuous. So I'll just bring it back. And now that looks much better. But we've still got those lines there from that grid line. So we're going to click on that, add and remove those segments as well. There. And that will just look neater because we won't have that horizontal line. So that also shows us how we can add in extra noggins and remove noggins in places where we don't want them. So that's it. Now, what have we got here? That seems to be coming through the wall. Right, I've got a feeling that I actually used the wrong size timber on those. So what I'm going to do is just jump back here click on that and click on that one and I will just yeah there we go look see I used the 150 mil ones instead of the 100 mil timbers so I'll just correct that and there we go that looks much better so that gives us our stud wall okay and we've also learned how to add in the door and adjust the position of the mullions so that we can make it look a bit more realistic. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe if you found it helpful and look forward to seeing you next time.